Recently, Future and Metro Boomin released their collab album, We Don't Trust You. On that album, there was a song featuring Kendrick Lamar called Like That, where Kendrick took shots at Drake and J. Cole. For many listeners, this was a surprise that Kendrick took shots at these guys, and it took the internet by storm. Everyone was talking about it, and many people were left with questions. Like, why would Kendrick diss Drake? Why would he diss J. Cole? And why would Future, a previous friend of Drake's, let this happen on his album? Well, today we're gonna check it out. Also, my name is Matty Balls. I'm gonna be releasing a video every single Sunday this year at 12 p.m. CST. So if you like music related topics like this one, make sure to stick around and please subscribe. Now, let's continue. It all started back in 2011 when Kendrick was coming onto the scene following Section 80. Drake and Kendrick met, Drake had Kendrick feature on Buried Alive, and even invited Kendrick to join him on tour. They also collaborated a few more times as well. But that friendship quickly turned into a bitter rivalry in August of 2013, after Kendrick's verse on Big Sean's song Control came out. We usually own boys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and them niggas should know what time it is. And that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale. Push your team, meet Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J Electron, Tyler Mac Miller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. They don't want to hear not one more now no verb from you. This verse sent the rap game into shock, and everyone thought it was crazy. And most people understood what he was saying that he was cool with all these people, but that he's also competitive and wants to be the best in the rap game. But good old Drake, who's known for being a tad bit sensitive, seemed to have taken this the wrong way. Drake did a handful of interviews after this, hinting at the fact that the verse hurt their relationship and basically saying that Kendrick did this all just for some brief clout. Drake also said, I didn't really have anything to say about it. It just sounded like an ambitious thought to me. That's all it was. I know good and well that Kendrick's not murdering me at all in any platform. So when that day presents itself, I guess we can revisit the topic. Which is funny because everyone is revisiting the topic right now. Anyways, Kendrick pretty quickly dissed Drake back at the BT Awards Cypher when he said, Nothing's been the same since they dropped Control and tucked a sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. Drake responded on his song The Language, and later said that he had to stand his ground, but there weren't any hard feelings. Where are you with, at with a lot of the cats now, like the J. Coles of the world or, or yeah. Drake's of the world? Where are you guys at now? Same place. Same place, this is all I love from I the that. moment I did the verse to after the verse. By this point, it was clear there was at least some type of animosity between the artists, but not some super intense beef. Over the following years, the two artists would fire shots back and forth at each other. Like when Kendrick said on King Kunta following Drake's ghostwriting allegations, I can dig rapping, but a rapper with a ghostwriter? What the f happened? Drake then responded on the game song 100 saying, I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious shit. In 2017, Kendrick took some pretty direct shots at Drake on the heart part 4 when he said, Jay-Z, Hall of Fame, sit your punk ass down. So that means you ain't bigger than rapping. He said this because Drake said he could make more money outside of rap, and his producer also said that they make music in a genre beyond rap. Of course, there's been a handful of more disses and other issues throughout the last decade or so between Kendrick and Drake, but I'm just trying to highlight the important stuff because that would be a very long video. As we know though, Kendrick took a five-year hiatus after 2018, and while he was gone, Drake kept making jabs and references to him. You know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm. I'm excited that the decade's about to turn and we're gonna see who can, you know, yeah. who can who can go that extra stretch. Oh, about these guys that go away three, four, five years, wanna chill out, all that shit, that's not me. Drake even took a super direct shot when he said, fake woke, fake deep, you ain't no fame before me. Give your ass a little sneak peek, now you gotta take a back seat. But Kendrick could not keep letting this slide. When Kendrick came back, he released an introspective album and collabed with Baby Keem a few times, but his priority clearly wasn't Drake, other than the smoking on your top five line in Family Ties. But after a while, it seems like Kendrick was fed up with Drake running his mouth, making jabs and subliminals on every other album he released. Do you think he thinks Drake is up there with him? No! Okay. <laughs> That's what I was no, hell no. Kendrick knew Drake wasn't better than him, and he wanted to make sure Drake knew that too. All of this led to March 22nd of 2024, when Future, Metro Boomin, and Kendrick Lamar released the track like that. When people were listening through Future and Metro Boomin's collab album, We Don't Trust You, they quickly noticed that Kendrick's feature on the song Like That was targeted at Drake. At first, his verse doesn't seem particularly targeted at anyone until he says, F sneak dissin', 
first person shooter i hope they came with three switches he continues later on saying motherfuck the big three it's just big me i'm really like that and your best work is a light pack prince outlive mike jack for all your dogs getting buried that's a k with all these nines he gonna see pet cemetery this is a pretty obvious reference to drake and j cole's song first person shooter where repeatedly on the song drake and j cole talk about how they are the best but there is also a line from cole on first person shooter where he says love when they argue the hardest mc is it k dot is it aubrey or me we the big three like we started a league drake j cole and kendrick have always been viewed as the big three of hip-hop in the last decade and a half but kendrick came out saying that he's the best kendrick also views some of the lines from first person shooter as sneak disses such as who the goat who you bitches really rooting for like a kid that act bad from january to november it's just you and cole so while j cole named all three artists in the big three drake only named himself and cole leaving kendrick out of the equation not only that but kendrick targets drake Drake in particular saying that Drake's best work is a light pack, then compares him and Drake to Michael Jackson and Prince, since on first person shooter Drake pointed out how he tied up Michael Jackson for number one songs. Prince outlived Mike Jack, which damn is is a cold bar, not only because you're, you're literally talking about how long both of them lived on this planet, but obviously Kendrick is uh, getting a bit uh, conceptual here and making a comparison. Your pop, your mainstream, your lowest common denominator, you are a agreeable me i'm prince i'm the experimenter i'm the innovator i'm the one who's daring i am the mold that other people are copying i'm the one who's ahead of the curve then kendrick directly references drake's album for all the dogs saying they are getting buried like the stephen king book pet cemetery with shots this direct taken at drake the rest of the verse makes a lot more sense when Kendrick says lines like, these people talking out of their necks, say it's a lot of goofies with a check, and people clicking up but cannot be legit. Even lines like DOT, the money, power, respect, the last one is better, can be interpreted in a way that shows Kendrick elevating himself above Drake. Because Kendrick has that respect from OG rappers, from pure rap fans, from the guys who really love the art that Drake never really had or never really has gotten. Now, Drake has gotten respect from the OGs and the pure rap fans like he has, don't get me wrong, but he didn't get it right away like Kendrick did. Kendrick came in and everyone was like, okay, this is the guy. So we understand why Kendrick went after Drake. It's fairly public knowledge that him and Drake haven't been big fans of each other, but why would he go after Cole? Many people think that J. Cole was caught in the crossfire of the diss, but J. Cole and Kendrick have actually been throwing subliminals at each other for a while now. Rap is a very competitive genre, and it's no secret that real lyricists want to be the best there is. And despite Cole and Kendrick being good friends years ago, there seems to have been some type of animosity between the two artists over the past decade or so. Similar to Kendrick and Drake, Kendrick and Cole used to be good friends in the early 2010s. When J. Cole met Kendrick, he immediately knew he was talented and wanted to sign him. Cole was sending him beats, they collabed here and there, and were even talking about making a collab album. This is something that never happened and many fans speculated up until recently that this collab album would come out. But their friendship, similar to Drake and Kendrick, would turn into more of a rivalry with Kendrick's control verse in 2013. Like I said earlier, he mentioned Cole, but again, he also said that he has love for all these artists. J. Cole has made it very clear that he is a competitive artist and that he sees artists like Kendrick and Drake as his competitors. He even hinted at the fact that it may have, in the past, affected their relationships. Because I think I was so competitive, I don't know how they would feel you have to talk to them, but I know for myself, I was so competitive early on that like, even though we were all friends, I would say we were all friends and friendly. Like I wasn't, uh, I've never been a reach out. You know what I mean? Like I never been a, I never been that person. So it's very likely that this control verse sparked a flame in Cole. Not only that, but Kendrick began winning multiple awards like BETs and Grammys over Cole, along with lists like MTV's Hottest MC list where Kendrick got number one and Cole didn't even make it. These things probably led J. Cole to feel like he was left out of the conversation, and possibly even had him feeling some type of animosity towards Kendrick. Throughout their entire careers, they have been compared to one another, with most people agreeing that Kendrick was the better artist. But despite all of this, they maintain the fact Fact that they were cool. Although, the last time people have seen them together was in 2017. Then, in 2018, Cole decided to shut down the possibility of a collab album with him and Kendrick. As I mentioned earlier though, Kendrick went on a bit of a hiatus for like 5 years. So the thought of the two even having beef wasn't really a discussion. In the interview I played earlier, the one that was released in 2021, Cole said that he had become more focused on building relationships with Kendrick and Drake rather than competing with them. You know, I don't want to be like, damn, I never... I mean, we never kicked it, you know what I mean? Like, we never really even did nothing. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm at that point where it's like, 
I'm more interested in the genuine relationship than mm-hmm. before I was interested in the competition. And it seems like he was able to build that relationship with Drake. I mean, they're literally on tour right now, but Kendrick seems to be a different story. When Kendrick returned in 2022 with his album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, people speculated that his line on the song, Count Me Out, was directed at Cole. He said, ain't nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off. And many people know that J. Cole's final album is supposed to be called The Fall Off. A handful of fans have also speculated that Cole has been sending subliminals to Kendrick as well, especially on his song with Benny the Butcher called Johnny P's Caddy. On the song, he said things like, I put your favorite rapper neck in a noose, never letting them loose. I'm probably gonna go to hell if I ask Jesus for a feature. Some see the glass as empty, I see a glass full of ether, collecting his bread in mass like he a Catholic preacher. Some speculated that these lines were targeted at Benny himself but Benny said he didn't think so he thought they were meant for someone else that on my record so you know people ask me about that but mm-hmm. we've been debating about that man like he was talking to somebody man if yeah, you ask yeah, me yeah. Mm-hmm. if you ask me he was talking to somebody yeah I saw folks ta- yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I saw folks saying they, they felt like he might have been taking shots at you on his own record I was like nah this led a few people to think he was talking about Kendrick because of the religious imagery in his humble video also Cole said at the end of the song on God the best rapper alive Headshot, now go and ask the best rappers that died. They tell you he never lied. This seems like it could be a reference to when Kendrick said he's the best alive. So great that he died. Some also interpreted his verse on the secret recipe by Yachty to have shots at Kendrick too. Because of lines like, People fake progressive and woke, I started saying less. I had to stop it. Peeped how they profit off of racial stress. Studio steppers moving extra on songs, fake and rep. This seems like even more of a Kendrick diss when you think about the fact that Drake called him fake woke as well. With all of this in mind, First Person Shooter may contain more Kendrick sneak disses from Cole than many thought. Cole said, A lot of people debate my numeral. Not the three, not the two, I'm the UNO. He also said, We the big three like we started a league, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali was nicknamed the greatest. So here Cole is in this song saying that while these other guys are good, he is still the best. And while many people thought that Cole was just caught in the crossfire between Drake and Kendrick's beef, it seems that Kendrick was a bit more intentional with his diss. Even Kendrick's line, if you walk around with that stick, it ain't Andre 3K, can be interpreted as a diss on Cole since he has a song called Stick where he talks about keeping one with him. Even though Kendrick mostly went after Drake on like that, it seems that he wanted Cole to know that he was the best. This is why Kendrick chose to respond to first person shooter, rather than just dissing Drake like he has been throughout his career. Also, I gotta give a huge shout out to What's the Dirt because he made a really good video on Cole and Kendrick's subliminal beef over the years and had a lot of this information and speculation. He even said that he would bet his whole channel that Kendrick would respond to first person shooter and he did, which is absolutely crazy. So make sure to check out his video after this one if you want a much more in-depth breakdown on Cole and Kendrick's relationship with even more evidence that there has been a subliminal battle going on between the two. But this leaves us with one last question. Why would Future and Metro Boomin be okay with such a direct diss on their album. Well, we've known that Metro Boomin and Drake have had a bit of a beef for a little while. It all started when Drake was left off of Metro Boomin's album Heroes and Villains back in December of 2022. Metro explained that there wasn't really room for Drake and that he liked the album how it was and couldn't find a spot for Drake on it. I was just in the studio with Drake one time because we were going to do some stuff on my album and he just wanted to hear some songs from my album. Then he heard that one and really wanted to get on it. But like, I was letting him know that it was really just done for real. And I was really just set on how it was. I was like, Brian didn't try to sell you no dream. Like, it's really like, just locked in i'm locked in where it was we don't really know if this is the only reason they began beefing or if there was more to it but this is just how metro explained it regardless the beef flared up again more recently when drake and 21 savages collab album her lost kept winning best album of the year over his album heroes and villains metro tweeted yet her loss still keeps winning rap album of the year over heroes and villains proof that award shows are just politics and not for me i don't care about awards honestly the true award and reward is knowing that the the music I spend so much time on brings joy to people's everyday lives. This tweet was quickly deleted, but from tweets Metro liked, it's clear that he had an issue with Drake. Drake seemingly and quite funnily responded to this in a live stream. And to the rest of you, to the rest of you, the non-believers, the underachievers, the tweet and deleters, you guys make me sick to my stomachs, fam. Honestly, if you guys want to look in my eyes, you guys want to do something? You guys, that's what I thought.
After this, Metro posted a meme from RDC World on his Twitter. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. Don't pull out the nine. <laughs> it's just a joke. Come on. Don't shoot. Don't, shoot. don't, shoot. don't shoot. really. Don't shoot. <laughs> so this feud was brief and it's public knowledge, but no one even knew that Future and Drake were beefing until this album came out, which has left everyone wondering why. Drake and Future were great friends for years, first collaborating all the way back in 2011 on the remix of Future's song Tony Montana. Funnily enough, there was a little bit of drama with this collab, with Future being upset at Drake for not showing up to the video shoot, which is understandable. Regardless, they were able to put that aside and collabed on many more songs over the years. There was another issue in 2013 when Future said he inspired Drake's song Started From The Bottom. He was in the studio session with me, that's when I had the chosen one. And I'm like, started when you make it from the bottom, you the chosen one. So when we was at the studio, Drake came by the studio, and I always tell my engineer, started from the bottom. So when I put the beats on, I was like, man, put put the beats in. So I always say, started from the bottom. So when I say started from the bottom, he thought I was talking about a song. So when I played chosen one, he loved the chosen one, but he was waiting for me in this and chosen one to say started from the bottom. So he said instantly, he telling me this story. He bought me a bottle of Louis XIII that I never opened up. Wow because of this story and I'm like, man, I won't buy it, I need publishing. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't a big deal and they were still cool despite this, but it could have been another reason that there might have been some animosity between the two. Anyways, Future and Drake continued to collaborate for years to come, with one of their most notable collaborations being the collab album What A Time To Be Alive in 2015. It's also interesting to note that this album was executively produced by Metro Boomin. They continued frequently collaborating up until 2022, when they last collabed twice on Future's album I Never Liked You. Most fans had no clue that Future and Drake had any sort of beef, until We Don't Trust You came out. That's when the internet detectives got to work. Many people began to think that Future's verse on the title track was a diss about Drake. He said, You my number one fan dog, sneak dissing I don't understand dog, pillow talking acting like a fed dog, I don't need another fake friend. Can't be about a hoe cause we sharing in your feelings why you playing. Then people began speculating that the reason they were beefing was over a girl, and even supposedly found the girl who it was. But Metro Boomin shut this down right away, saying, stop making stuff up for engagement and enjoy the music. But then there was also another rumor going around before the album released that Future and Metro were upset at Drake for some reason. Joe Budden said before the album came out that he sensed some tension between the two parties. And back to my, uh, future Metro booming Drake tension. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's weird that nothing ever happened with that fucking hit smash song that Future and Drake made with Tim's? What do you mean? Not wait for you? It was a hit. When you say, it was a hit. When you say, what? No, it was a hit. It was a smash. So what you mean? Nothing happened with it. Never heard it again. They also pointed out in this podcast how Future and Metro were tight. And because Future iconically says if young Metro don't trust you, I'ma shoot you for Metro's producer tag, and the album was called We Don't Trust You, and we knew there was some beef between Metro and Drake, that Future may have sided with Metro just because they're friends. With all of this in mind, the entire album seems like it could be interpreted as a diss to Drake. The title of the album is literally We Don't Trust You, and many of the outros on the album seem like they could also be directed at Drake. So we can't say for sure that we know the exact reason that Future and Drake are beefing, but we do know that it is in fact happening. Regardless, this beef allowed for fans to interpret previous lines from Drake's last album that seemed to fan the flames of the beef. For example, on For All The Dogs, Drake had a song called What Would Pluto Do, where on the hook he said, what would Pluto do? He'd F the hoe, so I did it. Originally, people thought this was a shout out to Future, but looking back, it might have been a diss, and it also may support the idea that they're beefing over a girl. There was even a lyric where Drake said on the song Middle of the Ocean, the lyrics begin to reveal themselves over time periods. Promise you'll get that sh when the sky clears. Many people again assumed that this was a reference to Future. People even went as far to say that many of the song titles were based on Drake's titles, but I think that may have been a bit of a reach. Regardless, this entire beef took the internet by storm, and it seems like Drake may have indirectly responded to the diss at a show. A lot of people ask me how I'm feeling. I'm gonna let you know how I'm feeling. Listen, I got my fucking head up high, my back straight, and I'm ten fucking toes down. In Florida, anywhere else I go, and I know that no matter what, it's not a nigga on this earth that can ever fuck with me in my life. And that's how I want you to walk out of here tonight. We even saw Drake liking a post from Aiden Ross saying that Kendrick has a full diss track ready. And Drake also posted on Instagram with the caption, 
they rather go to war with me than admit they are their own worst enemy. There also have been these strange billboards popping up recently saying that hip hop is a competitive sport. And we aren't sure who is putting them up apart from Spotify, but something is coming. This entire beef has had many artists picking sides. Even Rick Ross and Nav unfollowed Drake. It seems like the entire industry is going to war, resulting in funny memes like this one. And honestly, I'm excited to see it unfold. So the only question I have left for you guys is, whose side are you picking?